Good morning. How are y'all doing today? Good. You doing good? All right. Did y'all do anything fun the last couple of days? Yes. You went to my um, cousin's birthday party. All right. You went to your cousin's birthday party. You look like there was a bunch of birthdays turned yesterday. Three. Mm-hmm. Yep. Isaac turned three. Well, yeah. yeah. I could tell on, on Facebook that there are a bunch of parties going on yesterday, so it was a, a good uh, a good day for that, evidently. Well, today we're going to talk about something else, about what God is doing. All right? That's been the focus of what we've been doing in this big book of question and answers. Right? We've been talking about who God is, what God has done, and now, today, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened to the world God made. You know, the last couple of weeks, we talked about the beauty of the earth. We talked about uh, us as human beings, what God has done, and we also have talked about who God is. And one of the things that we learned about God was is that God does not change. He's the same as he was yesterday, as he is today, and he is tomorrow. And as we begin to think about that, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day you've given to us where we can come and worship. We can give thanks to you for all that you have done for us. And to God, as we continue to learn about you, May your Holy Spirit open our hearts and our mind to receive your truth. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, as I was saying, you know, God never changes, right? And we've learned that. But today we're going to talk about how the world has changed. Let me ask you a question. Are you the same yesterday as you are today? No. No? Well, how, how have you changed in the last couple of days? I changed clothes. Changed clothes, thankfully. What else did you do? Uh, hmm? What else changed about you? Let's go. All right. Well, you didn't go anywhere? All right. Well, what about your body changed in the last couple of days? I grew. Grew a little bit, change. right? Um, has your hair changed in the last couple of days? No. Yeah, well, your hair grows every day, right? That's why we have to cut it uh, about once a month, right? Because your hair is changing, right? You're, you're, you're getting new skin cells, your fingernails grow, right? You change every day. Now, why is that taking place? Have you ever thought about that? Why does your hair grow and why do you get bigger and why do you change? Well, we may not usually think of it in this way, but that's because Adam sinned. If we were in the garden, we would change, right? We would get bigger. But would anything die if we were still in the garden? No, right? Adam's sin brought death into the world. And that's what we're going to read about today in Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned, for unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Now, that was a lot. And I'm sure that that was confusing, right? It's even confusing to adults sometimes. And so we need to kind of think slowly through these words. Now, there's a commercial on TV that comes all the time where, you know, Morris Jenkins tells you to be, that they come and go gently, right? Gently. Well, we're going to treat the scriptures here gently, and we're going to go through them slowly. So let's think about what God is teaching us. God hasn't changed, but we have. We've changed because Adam 
ate the forbidden fruit in the garden. Now, we face death because Adam sinned. Not because Eve did anything, but because Adam was the one who sinned. And the reason for that is because Adam was in charge in the garden. Adam, as we, in the fancy way we talk, was the covenant head, okay? He was responsible for us. And so when Adam ate of the forbidden fruit, it was as if we ate the forbidden fruit. So we now have the same consequences as Adam. Now, again, that can be somewhat hard for us to understand, but it's important for us to believe that because of what happens next. Let's continue reading in Romans chapter 5. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ abounded to many. So just as we faced the consequence of Adam's sin, because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, we have been changed again. We are no longer under the consequence of Adam's sin. We are now receiving the benefit of Jesus Christ and his grace. And why is that? Because just as we were in Adam, we are in Jesus Christ. And we benefit from everything that he's done. Now, again, that can be hard for us to understand. And it'll, it'll take even for adults, again, to have that sink in. But it's important for us to understand the changes that are happening. Right? We've gone from being perfect in the garden to being stained in sin in Adam to being washed in Jesus Christ and now we are new in Jesus. So these three different steps have taken place and this change has happened to us. Now what hasn't changed is God's relationship to us. Right? God's promise that he made to us in Adam in Genesis chapter 3 that he would crush the head of the serpent remains true today. And it will remain true to you throughout your life. And so whenever you're scared or whenever you're drawn into doubt or wondering what's happening in the world, the great comfort that you can gain from what we've read today is that God has sent Jesus Christ to die for your sin, to make you a new person and to give you a new life. And this is done because God loves you and cares for you and watches over you. So take comfort in that today, especially as we come to worship, that the Lord your God has taken care of you. Take care and God bless.